Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my top 10 NFL players from week one, also known as the NFL List of Elite. Before we hop right into today's video, don't forget to use code Wyatt's World on G Fuel or Prize Picks, where you can save yourself a discount on any G Fuel products or guarantee yourself to win a free $50 with your first $5 lineup after using code Wyatt's World at sign up on Prize Picks. Also, don't forget Caleb Williams has a free square going this Sunday where all he needs is one yard for the entry to win. But remember to always play responsibly and let's get into the video. All right, so starting off the list, we have offensive tackle Joe Alt from the Chargers. If you guys missed it or haven't heard, he completely neutralized the Raiders' D-line when he played on Sunday. To put into further perspective as to how well he did, he had 11 one-on-one -on -one matchups with Max Crosby. He didn't allow a single pressure. The last time anybody held Max Crosby to zero pressures in a one-on-one -on -one matchup was week nine of 2022. Out of the 28 total defensive snaps Joe Alt played, he allowed just three pressures. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't think any of them came from Christian Wilkins either. Imagine your first day, your first game in the NFL. You successfully stand to your ground and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best defensive linemen in the league. Insane. Joe Alt, you're on the list of elite. All right, now moving on to the next elite player of the week, we have Chris Boswell. Absolutely a kicker is going to make it. He is single-handedly responsible for every single point the Steelers scored. Without Boswell, they do not win the game. One was a 20-yarder, two were in the 40s, three were in the 50s. The man was automatic. This is one of those games, I guarantee, where Steeler fans left it going, you know, I've always liked Boswell, but now I really know how much I like him. For him to not fold one time, especially on the road, honorable as shit. Chris Boswell, you're a dog. All right, time for the next player. It is indeed another stealer, and it has to be TJ Watt. This guy obliterated the Atlanta Falcons offensive game plan on Sunday. Not only did he have his game-ending sack, but he had multiple hits on the quarterback, multiple tackles for a loss. He recovered a fumble, and he also had a play that was so perfectly fucking timed, the referees couldn't believe it, and they called him offsides on what should have been a strip sack that also resulted in the only touchdown Atlanta scored. Like Kyle Brandt said this morning, and this is coming from a guy who has has Max Crosby as his defensive player of the year. Now, I did that because I want to be different. I also think he's good, but let's not fuck around. Like, TJ Watt is the best defensive player in football. All right, next player we've got is Baker Mayfield. There was no way he wasn't going to make this list. 80% completion percentage, 289 yards, four touchdowns, a passer rating of 140. Virtually no flaws, no mistakes, no errors. The guy played damn near a perfect game. Baker's story is always going to be just so incredible to me. Cleveland dished him, so he went to Carolina, lost his job to Sam Darnold, ended up leaving the Panthers in the middle of the season, signing with the Rams, started four games with them, then scratching clawed his way to a starting spot with Tampa Bay the following offseason, and now he's their franchise quarterback. Like, it's just, it's incredible. I'm extremely happy for you, Baker. I know you'll never see this video, but man, you've proven so many people wrong. All right, next player we have, it is David Montgomery. And I almost put j on the list, but I had to give it to David because of that last drive, dude. He legitimately won the Lions that game. Those four or five carries he had were some of the hardest runs I have ever seen out of his career. The Rams couldn't stop him. They couldn't get the guy down. He was breaking free. He was bouncing off of players. That last touchdown, he literally just ran right through a motherfucker. It almost brought me to tears because for an actual second, I thought I was watching Nicholas Jamal Chubb the eighth. People, including myself, often wonder about Jameer Gibbs usage and why Dan Campbell likes David Montgomery so much and I think it's been made very apparent now the guy's just fucking good all right, moving on to the next player we have. It is Cooper Cup, and this is the other reason J-Mo didn't make the list. I'm not having three players from the same game on the same list. And I think Cup's stat line was just more impressive at the end of the day. Coming into this game, the Rams were looking very good, very healthy, and then shortly after it started, Puka Nakua found himself injured, making Cooper Cup essentially Stafford's only option. Yeah, he had Tyler Johnson, who played a great game, but Cooper Cup finished with 14 receptions for 110 yards in a touchdown. I think this is very eye-opening to the people, including myself, who said they thought Cooper Cup was going to be slowing down this year because right now the guy still appears to be playing as if he's 26 years old cooper cup sorry for ever doubting you and you're still a fucking beast now moving on to the next player we have father time himself eric kendricks no i'm not kidding he was the first nfl player to record an interception in two sacks in 37 years and also the first dallas cowboy 
ever to do that. Like, it's only been done a total of three times in NFL history. Eric Kendricks is now one of them. Isn't that crazy? 32 years old and this guy's still putting his name in the history book somehow, some way. You just gotta ask yourself, is this because of Mike Zimmer? Because if you look at Kendricks under Mike Zimmer and under any other defensive coordinator, he's a completely different player. Now moving on, we have Jaden Reed out of Green Bay. This guy went crazy on Friday. Four receptions for 130 yards and a touchdown. Also one rush for 33 yards and a touchdown, especially on a field that was 90% mud. That's a pretty honorable stat line if you're asking me. And another thing about Jaden Reed that I'm going to imagine teams are going to start to have frustrations with is game planning on how to stop him because you never really know where he's coming from. I feel like Matt LaFour literally uses him to fuck with the other coach and the other team. Like, he'll send Jaden Reed in motion five or six times and do absolutely nothing with it. And then as soon as the other team lets their guard down, he's like, all right, jet sweep touchdown right now. Go fuck yourselves. He will be one of those players that you cannot rest on for a second because the second you do, you're cooked. Jaden Reed, you're elite. Moving on to the next player, we have Josh Allen. What, you, you thought I wasn't going to talk about Josh Allen on this list? You're tripping. And also, to all the people that keep tweeting at me and posting comments saying, Josh Allen is your entire team. Oh, I fucking know he is. But that ain't going to hide the fact that he manhandled the Cardinals this weekend. 78% completion percentage, 232 yards, two passing touchdowns, a passer rating in the 130s, as well as two rushing touchdowns where one of them he jumped over Buda Baker for I think his fifth or sixth career hurdle. He was my MVP pick pick for a reason. People can call me biased, but that really has nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with the fact that this year, so many people are writing him and the Buffalo Bills off because we lost Stefan Diggs. And week one was the ultimate example of we don't fucking need him. And yes, I know the game was close and yes, I still respect the Cardinal fans and that team. But you know, if the Bills would have had more than three possessions that first half of the game, this would not have ended within one score. And that's just factual information. Josh Allen, you're elite. And ending the list, we have Saquon Barkley, because how can you not? Saquon, I still think, probably had the overall best performance in week one, just due to the fact that he was on a dog shit field. And it was his first ever game playing for the Eagles, and on his first snap, he tripped and slipped and fell with the ball, causing the internet in all of New York to laugh hysterically at him and say that he was washed. Only for him to finish with 109 yards, two rushing touchdowns, as well as a beautiful reception touchdown where he had to contest to make the catch and successfully did it. Eagles offense is going to be deadly this year, and he is going to be a massive factor Why Saquon Barkley, you headline this week's list of elite. Anyway, guys, that is going to be all for today's video. I'm sorry that it was a little bit shorter, but I think most Tuesday videos now will be shorter with NFL therapy being my primary focus. But if you want to show support and you guys appreciated it, please do because you know I appreciate any and all help. However, in the meantime, I'm going to get this edited so you guys can all watch it on time. I hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. And as always, I will see you in the next video.